Well, welcome to another installment of Grindhouse Purgatory. And uh, today's subject isn't really about grindhouses per se. It's about early television. Um, and, you know, everybody thinks that VHS and DVDs were the automatic babysitters of today to keep kids occupied. Well, back in the day, when regular TV debuted, that was also used as a babysitter. And it was sort of like, uh, is anybody watching what these kids are watching? Because some of the stuff that was running on early TV back then was slightly questionable. But in 1955 on Channel 9 WOR in New York City, about 8 o'clock they ran a movie showcase called The Million Dollar Movie. Now, that was on 8 o'clock every night and twice on Saturdays for one whole week. And they started off the whole thing with a bunch of older movies, uh, the RKO stuff, like on Thanksgiving you'd get the usual um, triple bill of King Kong, Son of Kong, and Mighty Joe Young. Uh, they were running a lot of old stuff from the 30s and 40s, including a very, very politically incorrect movie from, I believe, 1936 called Slave Ship with a young Mickey Rooney, and it was about capturing slaves. Uh, I doubt this thing would air today because of all the PC shit going on, but be that as it may, um, I was going to Catholic school back then, and they had something called the Legion of Decency, which it pretty much spelled out what Catholic people could watch and what they couldn't watch, and high on the list was um, when the Universal Monster movies debuted on uh, primetime TV, which was like, you know, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we were home from school. So pretty much we got a letter to take home from the school saying that, you know, we can't watch stuff like Frankenstein, Dracula, The Wolfman, whatever. So being the sneaky little shit that I am, I snuck in the attic and found an old TV and fucked with the rabbit ears long enough that I could actually see Frankenstein and see him strangle Fritz and the cut part about throwing the girl in the lake and things like that. So after it became apparent to my parents that, you know, any steps to stop me from uh, watching these things would be futile at that point, they just sort of gave up. So about 1962, Million Dollar Movie wasn't doing well with these old retreads. So they had bought a package from Allied Artists uh, Movies, which... Um, pretty much had some pretty, you know, scary shit going on because when you're a kid and you see stuff like, you know, you're used to the Frankenstein Dracula, the Wolfman, but then you got stuff like uh, the Giant Behemoth, the Crawling Eye, House on Haunted Hill, Godzilla, things like that. And like, um, the beauty of the whole situation was because, you know, House on Haunted Hill would scare the fuck out of anybody, especially a little kid. So when that witch was coming through the door, turn the TV off. Turn it back on the next night and get to that point and see if you get past that. When they were carrying the severed head out, turn it off. And turn it back on the next night and see if you get point that that thing. Um, the other one was the crawling eye because when you open the damn door, you know, here's that thing with all the tentacles and stuff like that. Uh, giant behemoth, when that thing came around the corner and started radiating shit, turn the button off. So basically, you know, us kids were chicken shit and scared to death, so like I said, it ran, you know, seven days and twice on Saturday, so you could tune in and basically catch what you missed. Well, there were other films floating around uh, on that channel, and one was a film called Blackbeard the Pirate, uh, made in the year of my birth, 1952, which was another one that was slightly out of hand as far as letting a kid watch it, because... Um, it had a real great cast of, uh, of uh, character actors. Um, William Bendix was a pirate with a Brooklyn accent. Robert Newton was Blackbeard, and he also played Long John Silver about three or four times. Uh, Robert Newton is credited with coming up with the pirate language of R and this and that, R matey, and, you know, we'd be imitating this shit in school the next day after we saw it. But, you know, you had, like I said, you had a great cast of character actors, um, Keith Andes, Linda Darnell, um, Jack Lambert, Anthony Caruso, uh, Skelton Nags, and others. And um, this was pretty fucking brutal and action-packed for a 50s film, because don't forget, you didn't have special effects when uh, 
The ships were clashing and the pirates were boarding the other ships. It was stuntmen having a blast, killing each other with sabers and things like that. And, um, you know, like I said, Newton hammed it up to the hilt, and uh, Newton was an idol of another actor, Oliver Reed. Um, we all know about Oliver Reed and his drinking, and unfortunately, Robert Newton was another one who drank a lot and passed away at age 50. Reed made it to, I think, 64 or 65, you know, right after Gladiator when he had a massive heart attack after drinking a whole ton of shit in a bar in Malta and basically arm wrestling uh, eight British sailors and beating them all. But that's, you know, Oliver Reed. Um, there was a lot of crazy shit in uh, Blackbeard the Pirate. Floggings, beatings, sword fights, stabbings. Um, and the end was pretty brutal because um, there was a, a, a swerve where... Blackbeard's original crew was imprisoned by his new crew when they were trying to get this treasure chest over the side and in the ensuing fight it fell into the ocean. So they decided to punish Blackbeard by marching him up on the island, digging a hole, dropping him in it, and watching the water come in and cover his head. Of course, Blackbeard ain't about to stand still for this and, you know, Newton was a big guy and it was a big fight scene and basically he was stabbed a couple times, shot a couple times, dropped into the hole and backed up as we see, you know, the water come in and cover him and drown his ass. Again, not something, you know, you would put like a, a 10 or 12 year old kid in front of, but like I said, nobody was watching what we were watching. Uh, another film that was incredibly brutal for the time was, I believe it was 1963's Genghis Khan. Uh, that starred Omar Sharif and Stephen Boyd and Stephen Boyd always usually played a heavy, and it was pretty strange for a heavy to be, like, top build in a film. But it was the story of Genghis Khan, Temuchin, and it opened up with um, his village getting raided, people getting stabbed, impaled, cut, whatever. Um, there was a hint of rape thrown in here and there, and Temuchin's father was drawn and quartered by uh, the Stephen Boyd character. Um, he was also in prison with this huge yoke around his neck when he was a boy. And uh, eventually he broke three with the help of another slave, uh, played by Woody Strode. And the casting in this whole thing was really, really strange because, like I said, this was a bloody film, but you had um, James Mason and Robert Morley playing Chinese people. Because, you know, Khan got into China and, you know, was helping, you know, the Morley character, the warlord, maintain his hold over the area, but then uh, they had something that, Genghis didn't have, which was gunpowder, and that sort of gave him the edge. Um, basically, they broke out of China, they killed the Morley character. Um, the James Mason character stayed with him as an advisor, and his whole deal was to unite all the Mongol tribes. Well, of course, the one sticking point is the Stephen Boyd character. So he sends uh, his emissary, you know, the James Mason character, to uh, negotiate a thing, and he's sent back in a bag in pieces. So now there's a brutal battle between the two, and like I said, this wasn't for kids. I mean, this was a blood-soaked mess, which ended with uh, Genghis Khan impaling his enemy with a sword to the ground, and then, you know, standing off, dying in a chair from his wounds, but he had succeeded in uniting the Mongol tribes. Um, Million dollar movie sort of fell by the wayside after that. I don't know if it was complaints of violence or maybe the whole showcase had just run its course. But, you know, WOR in New York and WPIX in New York were just fledgling local stations that had basically, you know, just local talent, you know, some kid shows, some news shows, and that was it. So they had to fill in the void until they started producing their own stuff with, you know, whatever movie packages they could pick up. Of course, that gave birth to Chiller Theater, Supernatural Theater, Shock Theater, things like that, as, you know, late-night showcases for horror films. But like I said, the one that really started the whole thing was Million Dollar Movie. And like I said, there was some great, great stuff in there, especially, you know, when they bought the Allied Artist Package, because not only did you get, like I said, the giant behemoth and, you know, Godzilla, but you got great films like uh, Attack of the Crab Monsters, Not of This Earth, you know, things like that. And um, like I said, you know, it, it was a showcase and it was something that, you know, really got me interested in the whole, you know, 
grindhouse genre because these, you know, prior to TV, where else were they playing in grindhouses? You know, all the horror double bills and stuff like that were, you know, drive-ins and grindhouses. So I don't know if there was any, if there was a million dollar movie type of thing anywhere other than New York City or the East Coast. Maybe there was, but if there was, I haven't heard of it, but I figured, you know, this is, you know, another, another part of, you know, the history of all this stuff, and I figured, you know, East Coast fans might enjoy hearing about it, so, uh, and I also remember the theme, Million Dollar Movie, they stole the theme from Gone with the Wind, I believe, so, uh, it was an impressive package when it opened up, but unfortunately, uh, like anything else, the lifeblood of Million Dollar Movie, uh, was the films, and the films were all that remain of what was back in the past, so, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. If you need to contact me, you can get me at grindhousepurgatory at gmail.com. If you want a better deal than Amazon gives you on any of my products, feel free to ask, and I'll cut you the best deal possible. So again, you know, we're living in troubled times, and please mask up, please stay safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side. This is 42nd Street Pete saying stay sick, but stay safe.